This video is sponsored by Battle City Gym. Check them out for all your singles and sealed product needs. Hey guys, this is Mike. And Joe. From Deep Wood Force of Will. Deep Wood Force of Will. And we're here bringing you um, a very topical discussion video. We've got our pre-release for Ancient Knights this weekend, so I figured, hey, you know what we should do? We should do another uh, top five top... We were thinking of doing another top ten list, because it's like we haven't done one in a while. And then we were just like, wait a second, this set has a lot of really bad cards. Yeah, there's a lot of memes in here. So, uh, in a similar fashion to back when we did our Battle for Adoractia video, we went over our top and bottom five. We're going to do pretty much the exact same thing here. Yeah, um, but we do want to make a little bit of a PSA about it. Uh, we do know that this is a draft set and not everything needs to be, like, standard level powerful. So don't take a lot of these cards as too serious. A lot of them are actually on power for what they should be in this set, but some of them are just funny bad, which is okay. Yeah, exactly, because everybody needs meme cards. And, you know, in the in a draft you can have bad cards, so it's okay to have a little bit of, like, filler cards. But still, we were going to make fun of them, so let's go. All right. Uh, first of all, we're going to start off with one of the top five. This is number five best card. We have Dark Revolution, uh, four will, uh, two black, two colorless chant, and... Very simple card, put target resonated from your graveyard into your field. Yeah, it's basically just like a call, dance of shadows, that type of thing. Yep. You know, kinda. helps with the uh, just recurring resonators that you need to get back. Cheating in big things if you got them into your graveyard early. Good stuff. Yep, exactly. Uh, very important thing to note is that while this card doesn't have a lot of the uh, caveats of other uh, revival cards, it doesn't have like the same low cost or remnant or quick cast uh it has no um conditions to it it's very simple yeah which is usually a good thing with cards like this because it means they can be more powerful because you don't have to worry about you don't have to do combos in order to get the full value out of it you just play the card get full value out of it i think we'll go first into um the two cards that we think are most similar of course one of them being dance of shadows which is pretty much an almost exact comparison Again, uh, four, yeah. again, total cost of four, with put target resonator from your grave into the field. However, Dance of Shadows does have quick cast and remnant, which is, you know, makes it fantastic. It's reusable, it's, you can use it on your opponent's turn, but the card is removed from the game at the end of the turn. Um, also, Dance of Shadows had that, like, skill cap to it, quote-unquote, where you had to know that when to play it during, like, that in-between phase between your opponent's end turn and the beginning of your turn. So you could get like pseudo swiftness on your resonator, which was pretty strong. But um, I'm kind of happy that they made a simpler card for that, so that your players don't get like you know fed up with why their dance of shadows isn't as good as other people's dance of shadows. Right, exactly. And then of course the other one is the one that we actually currently have in New Frontiers. The only other revival spell we have in New Frontiers, uh, End of Days, which is pretty much the same thing at chance speed. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper technically than. Um, Dark Revolution. Yeah, yeah, that too. <laughs> Almost forget the name. Uh, <laughs> but it's only for fire and dark res resonators. Um, it removes things at the end of the turn. And if anything, would leave the field, they're removed. So it's got a lot of conditions on it. So uh, definitely a little more complex, a little more complicated. Um, but Dark Revolution is definitely something moving forward that will be very, very strong for these kind of decks. End of Days and uh, was more of like. Uh, it's more of a combo card, but this is more just like straight up. I have big thing in my grave. I'm gonna put the big thing on board and start doing that. The end of days is more for like abusing the enter effects of them. Yep, exactly. Because of mainly the interactions with like Lumia and Fox. Yep. All right, so I guess we'll move on to our uh, first of the worst cards. First of the worst, we got number five worst card: Magic Water Warrior. Oh lord. <laughs> yeah, so... First off, it's a 4-will 9-9 nine nine with flying and mobilize 2. Like, jeez, that mobilize 2 is just awful. Like, even the 9-9 nine nine for 4 and flying is, like, on par with what other decent cards are. But then you just like, by the way, you have to pay 2 mana to get this thing to attack or block. And that's just atrocious. It's really In bad. Fact, if you want to compare it to some of the other picks that we had that have seen play, quote unquote, I don't think, I don't know if Grim's gonna see play, but um, we got Lucifer. Lucifer was insanely good when he first came out. 
because it was just like, well, more the Seraph interaction, but that's off point. But the thing is, you had a four well thing that caused your opponent to banish a resonator, and it was a 9 9 flyer. Re really solid when you can put it that way, and then you've got Grim. Who was, who was, first of all, from the same cluster. We're gonna start off with that. So this is technically the power level we wanna see for a 9 9 flyer for four, where you get good effects with it. Comparatively, from this draft set, uh, Magic Water Warrior is atrocious. Yep, so, um, good job, Magic Water Warrior. You're not the worst card in the set, but Definitely you are Definitely not awful. the best, yeah. <laughs> also, comment on the fact that it's a water golem, which water doesn't really have support for golems, but they made one for it, so whatever. <laughs> We got a couple of water golems, but that's it, the water golem sport is way worse than the light golem sport, in my opinion. Right. Anyway, back to good cards. Yep. Moving forward, uh, number four, we have Shayla's Foresight, uh, which is a card that a lot of people looked at at first and were like, "Oh, this seems okay," but then if you look a little harder, you see some really, really cool facts. So, uh, first off, it's a two-cost uh, quick cast chant, which is already fine. <laughs> Uh, you can choose one, but if your ruler is Shayla or Shayla the Mermaid Princess, you can choose up to three instead out of these four effects. Uh, first effect is that you put target attacking resonator on top of its owner's deck. Second is to put target addition on top of its owner's deck. Uh, you can shuffle all magic stones from a grave into a magic stone deck, and then shuffle all the cards from the grave into the main deck. Or you can draw a card. And if you're playing Shayla, more than likely you're going to be using second and fourth effects. Um, because drawing a card makes you go one for one on the spell, and then if you put a target resonator and a target uh, chant on top of the target addition on top of their deck, you basically put them back two draws, which is pretty strong. That's a minus. That's like a three card swing. Right, exactly. And the last little bit there, the fact that you shuffle the magic stones from the grave into the magic stone deck, there are very few cards from the set, um, from New Frontiers now actually, that can shuffle magic stones back in, so having another one of those uh, reset your uh, graveyard into the deck cards is pretty strong, especially in addition to other effects. Yep, it's a strangely strong card. Um, so in order to compare this card to cards that have seen play, We've got uh, Horn of the Sacred Beast, and we've got Zeke's the Ancient Magic. Horn very simply does that shuffle effect that we were just talking about, which made Horn extremely powerful. Probably one and of the most represented cards in most control decks during that uh, Alice Cluster, Rhea Cluster format. Uh, Alex, Alex and uh, Lapis. But, Alex yeah. and Lapis, but um, the, the same thing. <laughs> um, then we have Zeke's. Zeke's was just a multi-action spell that had like buff effects, it had a cancel on it. Um, Zeke's was just very good because of its versatility. Mostly it was used because it could cancel resonators, but it was still a very good card, even if you did wanted to use the buff, because I think it saw play as the wide buff in, like, what, the aggro decks? Yeah, back in, like, um, what was it, uh, Necrolance format, I used Zeke's a couple of times and swung with Cthugas, keeping a full plus two plus two buff to the board. Really, really strong card. So, yeah. Um, be on the lookout for what Shale's Foresight can do. It's not insanely strong outside of Mermaid, but it, when it's used in Mermaids, it's extremely good. Absolutely. And you'll probably see it come up in a couple of like water control decks since you can shuffle the stones back in. It's a very, very interesting uh, action there. Um, the tree might even play it just so that they can, you know, quick cast, put their brave back, not die. It's basically a little bit of a nice block for them as well. Yep, exactly. A couple of really cute interactions. Uh, so moving forward, we got to our... some more bad cards. <laughs> Woo! Uh, number four, we actually have a tie between two very similar cards: uh, Demon Watcher and Stealth Demon. And they're pretty much the same card. I'm gonna do Demon Watcher. Cool. Uh, so it's a five will eight six demon flying. Both of them have that stats. So, and then this one says when it's put into a graveyard from the field, it deals 600 damage to target resonator. Uh, <laughs> that's bad <laughs> yep alright so and uh, stealth, so demon. stealth demon yep. that one does the exact same thing except when it's put into a grave from the field it deals 600 damage to your opponent so it's very easy to see that both these are bad cards 
but you gotta think demon watcher could be like a three cost probably still be a bad card it would still not see play because eight six is atrocious stats it's too much for a two drop obviously but at three cost you could do an eight six flyer that does that that's not a problem and like dealing 600 damage after turn three unless you're hitting an abdul uh that's pretty bad yeah uh and then stealth demon is obviously terrible <laughs> five will uh when it dies your opponent takes a bit of their life total Ooh. oh no i took damage it's not even like lose life with jack which would be a little bit better too exactly uh fun little fun fact though with these guys i just noticed uh on the bottom their number from the set demon watcher is number 34 and stealth demon is 134 <laughs> that's actually pretty funny that's a cool, cute little fact yeah. right. um anyway to compare these cards we've got um Lapis's Beast of Flame, which is a card that never saw play. A 3-will 6-4. A 4-will uh, 6-4. Four four. Four with Swiftness, and then the effect of Demon Watcher as a Enter effect. And this card saw absolutely no play. It was actually considered a bad card in that set. <laughs> and this card is even worse, so that's insane. Mm-hmm. And then on to the next one, we got Crimson Ray, which is a spell that has the ability to deal 600 damage to a player or J Resonator, so you can do either of their effects. It mm -hmm. comes with Life Gain, it has Quick Cast, and is for 2 will. Yeah, that's uh, really strong. And it doesn't really see that much play because you might as well just play like Blood Boil or something. Right. And then the last uh, little thing we have listed on here is uh, what we think a 5-drop that uh, actually affects the board should be. We've got Persia ready for the final battle. Uh, right. Of course, when she enters the field or attacks, you can destroy Resonator Pwn Controls with less attack than her. And then you get counters, so she's a snowball-y 5-drop with good stats, unlike the other two. Man, if you play, if you play Demon Watcher and then your opponent plays uh, Prissia into your Demon Watcher... You lose the game. <laughs> your 5-drop gets killed for free, and then it hits your face for a lot of damage. Good stuff. Those are terrible cards. <laughs> and it only gets worse from there. Woo! Anyway, on to the next one. We got third we got best. Good things. Favorite spell. Spare spell is a one-cost green, quick cast chant, where you can cancel target spell with quick cast. And as everyone should know, quick cast spells are very good. Non quick cast spell chants are not that good. So it turns out there's a lot of quick cast cards that are being used in standard play right now. Including a ton of cancel spells. Every single cancel has quick cast. So you can cancel target cancel with your cancel. I, everybody knows how much we love counter counter from Yu Gi Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's a trap. This is a chant. This is a chant. <laughs> Very true. So, and uh, um, there's also some resonators that have quick cast that are pretty good, like Melfi. Bam. Right there. Yeah. So the fact that Melfi is such a staple in control and ramp decks, you're just like, all right, I'm going to hold my two will and save it for the next turn. I'll play it on their turn and then have an extra will during their next turn. If you try to cast in Melfi during your opponent's turn and they have one will open, you do not cast that Melfi. <laughs> The, well, you might, but you, you might. do run the risk of getting hit by Ferris spell, which is a good tempo play, and it ruins your curve, quote-unquote. Yep. And then and... Uh, the only other thing we have to really compare it to is Severing Winds. Again, uh, cheap cancel spells, as we know from Severing Winds, are very, very, very strong. Um, and also, this card can cancel Severing Winds, or Severing Winds can cancel the spell. More cancel wars! Yay! <laughs> So yeah, Pharaoh Spell, very strong card, especially because we got a bunch of really good quick cast stuff out of the set, too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, here's looking at you, top number one and number two best cards of this game. Pharaoh Spell <laughs> has, your, <laughs> has your number. And um, now for cards that have no one's number, except maybe the third slot in our bad list. Variants! We've got... <laughs> we've got 10 different resonators that have the same clause to them that they have variants of themselves. Yep, we've got uh, 
Wind Rider Panda, Stone Toast Basilisk, Giant Squid, Pharaoh's Escort, and Vicious Wounded Beast. All variants, as well as their non-variant counterparts. Um, these cards, while they're not the worst things we could have ever seen, uh, what they represent is something terrible <laughs> that <laughs> could have been executed. Some of them are absolutely atrocious. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, first one would be, like, uh, Stone Talks Basilisk variant. Yeah, we could go over that one first. Yeah, that's a uh, two will five five. Whenever this card attacks, target Resonator cannot can't block this turn. Um, we have a card like that. It's actually a pretty good card and sees a lot of play. It's Sylvia, <laughs> which is two will six six swiftness. Whenever this card attacks, target Resonator can't block this turn, which Ooh. is <laughs> like almost twice as good. I feel like you could make Stone Touch Basket like a, a one drop and then it would finally actually see play <laughs> when you compare it to how good Sylvia is. True. And then I got Giant Squid down there who is a 6-10 for 3. That's the variant. The non-variant is a 5-10 for 3. Uh, we have a card from Curse of the Frozen Casket which was a had the exact same mana cost and stat line but also came with an effect. Uh, yeah. What was that card called? Uh, something something Keeper Frozen Cassia. You know, I don't even know. <laughs> it doesn't matter, because that card is irrelevant. And this card is probably twice as irrelevant, because it's a vanilla with those same exact stats. Exactly. And then everything um, else is just, you know, generally bad. Yeah, the one that I would put, like, an asterisk could be, like, that shouldn't be on this list is, like, the, the Wounded beast because yeah, you know it puts mystery counters on which are pretty good and the variant is first strike which is okay i guess for one less defense which is a fine trade-off honestly yeah that's the only one we'll say it's like okay um the elf one the elf variant thing is like pretty bad it just has like that can't be destroyed. Yeah, and then the other. Of your next turn. Yep, and then here's the uh, the non variants we have on this screen. Um, as you can see, color changed. Ooh. <laughs> He's wearing a green shirt today. Wow, back and forth. <laughs> so we got those. So just take a good look at them. Yep. They're not good. Honestly, we don't have to go over these much more than we already have, just because. It's pretty simple, they're bad, and we know why they're bad. <laughs> um, they probably aren't as bad as the demons, but again, just what they represent is like 10 filler cards from the set that have similar stupid ideas to them. We could have had two other rulers, but no. <laughs> <laughs> we put 10 filler cards in instead. Uh, Alright, good cards, good cards, good cards. Alright, on to the next. Lethal got... Arrow! Yay! That's a good card. This is actually my choice for my favorite card of the set, but because I just want to play a, a certain ruler. But anyway, it's a one will uh, quick cast chant. Destroy target damage resonator. And someone's going to be like, but, but guys, there's already a chant that we have like that that's still in the game. And it's a red one, and it has another effect. And we're like, we don't care. This one is black. <laughs> Going off of what Joe's saying there. Uh, we got the next screen here to show exactly what that card is, because that's Demon Flame! Yeah, we got Ally of the Black Moon. Ooh. Yep, we got both of the cards that we think will synergize very well with Lethal Arrow. Uh, Ally of the Black Moon, Mikage. Uh, you pay one black to deal 100 damage to target Resonator and put a blood counter on him. So, once you dealt damage, you'll Lethal Arrow hit away. <laughs> yep, so... Basically all that's- and then we have Demon Flame, which is the card I was talking about as being the destroy target damage resonator. So there's two cool things that comes with Lethal Arrow joining the game. It's, um, uh, Ally the Black Moon, Mikage, doesn't have to run red anymore, which is definitely a huge bonus because red isn't exactly the best control color. And now that it doesn't have to run red in order to get its kill spell, you can run, like, I don't know, blue and get, you know, other control options. And the other thing is that now that we have uh, Lethal Arrow in the game, if you want to make like the gimmick, most gimmicky possible ally of the Black Moon deck, you can put four Lethal Arrow, four Demon Flame, and four Rush Mataro in your deck, so your opponent will never have a board. Ever. Ever. 
And once you start building up those blood counters, you win all, the game. We all know what Mikage does when you get enough blood counters on him. Yep. Alright, so we're hoping to see a little bit more Mikage in the next uh, format just because Lethal Arrow, so that'll be good for him. He'll be a solid control ruler again. Exactly, and we'll probably see a lot of really cool colors get mixed in with him if people want to stop using Demon Flame. We'll probably see some really creative builds come out of that. Yep. So, we like Lethal Arrow. Good job. Yeah. Good, really good design. Good design. Anyway, like good design. design, we got <laughs> the best art in the game. Bam! Leaf Healer. <laughs> um, so, unfortunately, we uh, got spoiled this... What was it, like a year ago? Was it? A, no, it was like... Or was it a couple happened. months ago? This one? No, I, this one was actually kind of recent. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> What did he use? A uh, uh, treasure sprout of the world tree or something? No, he literally used. Um, we're talking about Billy Buttons, who decided to make yeah. his own uh, malefic leaves of uh, the leaf of the malefic tree, where he put angry eyes on a leaf of Yggdrasil. Right, <laughs> and that's what this card is. <laughs> we'll let the face speak for itself on this card, but um, is that the face of mercy? <laughs> this is not the face of mercy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this card is atrocious, but at least the art's amazing. So, why is this card so bad, you might be asking. I don't know why you're asking that question, but you did. So, anyway, it's a 5-drop 015. That's Ugh. already a horrible stats. Um, it's an elemental. That's a positive. Wow. Good on you, Leaf Healer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end of your turn, recover all resonators you control. So the card actually does nothing while it's on the board. <laughs> All it does is just sit there and then does something at the beginning of your opponent's turn, pretty much. That yeah. probably doesn't really affect him all that much. Especially because if you're trying to recover all your resonators, you're probably playing a, like a swarmy kind of deck. You're not playing a 5-drop 015 in a swarm deck. You know, if they did it as like when this card enters the field, recover all resonators, it would be a good card. Yeah. It would be a pretty scary card, It'd be actually. Playable. Yeah. But no, it it's, it's probably the most defensive card possible. Yeah. It's, uh, it's so disappointing. Oh well. I know. We feel her. You had a chance, but you got you got that face. You blew it. That's all you got. I'm 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 <laughs> my face is exactly the same as yours, Lee Feeler. Just very nonplussed at your you stat been, line. You could have been the face of the meta. You could have been. <laughs> <laughs> could have been, could have been an angry malefic leaves. <laughs> all right, that's Lee Feeler. Anyway, we don't even have a second screen for him. We'll let his face do all the talking. But going off of him, we're gonna we're gonna forget about him for a second because we're gonna go on to our number one best card of the set. Boof. It's a blue card. The blue Jesus card call. being the best card of the set. What is this madness? Don't we usually have blue cards be the best card of the set? I don't think so. I think, what was it? Like, BFA we had... No, wait, Titania. That's right. Yeah. But then, CFC we had... Heavenly Gust, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyway, Keys is cool. It's a blue... Quick cast. Cancel target automatic ability of a resonator. Draw, Draw a card. card. So, if all y'all remember how good a Glimpse of Kaguya was as a tech card, in a format where activate abilities were like kind of seen, uh, this card is a one cost less that does the exact same effect, that does it for automatic abilities. Of course, it's only for resonators, but that's okay because all of our good automatic abilities, all of our enter the board abilities, are all for resonators. Yep. Um, it would have been really cool if it was J resonator, but that'd be only power. And that's probably why Glimpse of Kagi was a two cost because it could hit J resonators. Right, and it could stop God's Arts. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, but what that that doesn't matter because this card is just insane. Um, so comparably, you can compare it to Abdul. Abdul being the blanket effect, obviously, that just lasts forever. You could also compare it to uh, Prison in the Lunar Lake, which we just had rotated out, which killed the Resonator, but you also had to control a Water Magic Stone, and you also the Resonator had to have entered the turn that entered the field that turn. Yep, and also it was a uh, stealth card, so either you had to pay two to put it down and then flip it up, or you had to pay three to play it from the hand. So, and it also didn't draw you a card. 
Yeah, and drawing a card is pretty good, but it did destroy the resonator, so. Which is totally Pros fine, though. Cons. Yeah, which is totally fine, though, because this format has a lot of uh, resonator removal. So as long as you can cancel the ability, the resonator will almost have no value if you could just, like, remove it with, like, say, a Mikage ping and then a lethal arrow. Or if it's a griffin, you could just gale force it. <laughs> True. Speaking, Speaking of which... Speaking of griffin... Yeah, there he is! Uh, that's a really strong enter the field effect. Would be a shame if somebody cancels it for one will. And they will. And they'll do it quite often if they have Keys' Call in their hand, because if you get that first to not go... You're in a winning position. Because <sighs> you sacrifice your opponent's stone, and then you don't get the two stones back. So if they try to cheese you out with the first turn killing stone, leave your one will open. They might actually have to think. Ugh, a fox player <laughs> thinking? <laughs> Jeez. Don't be too mean. Fox actually requires a lot of, like, micromanaging. I know. Except for when you get turn one killing stone, and then you just go. Then you just poop on their life. Anyway, yeah. so that's Keys' Call. Great card. We're really? going to see a lot of it in the upcoming format. I don't think there's any question about that. Yep, uh, any blue deck is going to have some way to contest with Fox now. Now that we have Keys' Call and Dawn of the Earth in the, in the game. Yeah, Forget Fox about it. might that's... actually get oppressed a little bit. Ooh, Maybe. wow. <laughs> um, biggest thing I'd want to say Keys' Call fits into is um, Kaguya. Yeah, definitely Kaguya. Cause... Because Kaguya had a, has a big struggle against Fox if he starts getting things on board. He's his call, make sure that you get that mana deficiency going in the game from there. Yep, and if you need to, you just return things to the hand. When they, have to, they enter the board again, you keep his call them again. <laughs> and if they're not getting their extra stones, they're not getting the enters, so all great. Fantastic. Right. So that rounds up our top five, and we got our last awful 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 card the worst of the worst hope you're all prepared because it is ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. fire dragon's egg <laughs> uh, uh... so for four will two red and two colorless you get a zero, zero one hundred uh, it's a resonator dragon great we need more dragon support just not this Man. So, before you even read the text, all right, four will zero one hundred is absolutely trash. The most abysmal possible stat line. Right. It, it's not even the lowest. It's it might be actually the lowest statted egg we've ever seen. It's yeah. There are. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. We'll talk about that after. But um, so the first line of this card is this kind of card or block. So that means you have to figure you actually have to combo it in order to activate this card. Which is awful because it's already paying way too much. If it could attack or block if it could block, this card would probably be okay. Maybe. It wouldn't even be okay because what it does when it's put into the graveyard it is only put a thousand thousand fire dragon resonator with tart with flying onto the field. That's not even like worth four mana premium stats yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's really well, mediocre so what's the simplest way to deal 100 damage to a fr to a friendly resonator probably mikage just so, do one black for the ping so what you're technically getting is a five mana thousand thousand flyer that gives you a blood counter yeah that is atrocious but, uh, unless there's some way to like duplicate this I mean there is but I mean okay we probably should consider the fact that's a token that you can duplicate Ooh. oh you can shadow of lapis ah <laughs> but the shadow disappears at the end of the turn anyway so unless it had swiftness then it would be pretty cool if it had flying and swiftness this card might be playable no but... it wouldn't <laughs> As it stands, you can't trigger this card very easily, and it doesn't get good reward for triggering it, so you lose. Mm. <laughs> if your four drop is a fire dragon's egg, you're gonna lose. Uh, anyway, we should probably compare this to a good egg. Like, the best egg. It's the final nail in the coffin for Ruck Egg. Oh my god. Yep, Ruck Egg was 
one drop, zero two, if it gets put into the graveyard, just search your deck for a fire resonator. Any fire resonator. <laughs> hey, you can search uh, fire dragon's egg. Ooh, not. What's inside the egg? Another egg! <laughs> <laughs> But the uh, big thing about Rook Egg is that you could block with it, which was great. Uh, it meant that in the early game, people couldn't block with things on the, couldn't attack with things on the ground because you just block and get value out of it. Yep. So there was actually merit to running a thing that had a uh, no attack and the inability to attack. Go figure. But the Fire Dragon Egg can't even block. <sighs> There is no redeeming qualities about this card. It's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> but hey, if you do trigger it, it's only slightly better than the Demon Watcher twins. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Atrocious. Uh, uh, anyway, so rest in peace, Rock Egg. Fire Dragon's Egg, you are unfortunately the worst here of the to worst. stay. Yep. <laughs> uh, so you're okay. you're worse than Last People of Gloria. Oh uh, my God, it's true. Last People of Gloria has 900 more defense than this thing does. It's a zero one thousand. That's decent at giving life gain. Yeah, this one is bad. And Last yep. People of Gloria can block. <laughs> yeah, it was actually a decent defensive card if you want to put it that way. Yeah. But no one would ever play it for that, but it's a defensive card, and then this card you cannot do shit with. It has to sit on the board until you do a combo with it to sack it. Oh, you want to make someone... Uh, no, it's still a 4-drop, never mind. I was going to say, if you could, if it was still a 2-drop, then you could um, came it, then sack it. <laughs> Give your came swiftness, get the, t reson the Resonator token. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> hey, you know what? You know what would be the even better? When you combo this and you get your flying token, it gets Gale Forced. <laughs> <laughs> or the plethora of other uh, deal excess damage to flyers yeah. that we have in, yeah. the, in the set. We have a lot of that. <laughs> anyway, um, let's move on to our last slide. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for sticking through to the end and seeing uh, the garbage that we've had to deal with and the good stuff. Alright, so uh, please let us know what you guys think is the high-speed dash of the set. Um, really interested in seeing how good you think, uh, uh, which card is on it? Uh, a Magic Warrior, Magic Water Warrior is, and how it's definitely going to see play when it doesn't. Right, like with, <laughs> like when we did high-speed dash. It was like, oh, right. high-speed dash is a good card, it's great! <laughs> Mid saw playing maybe like, a Sylvia casual deck? Yeah. Good times, good times. But yeah, definitely proves us wrong. Um, bring it to our locals. Bring any of these cards you want to our locals. The, the negative ones. Tell us how uh, good they are. <laughs> now nah, we're kidding. Anyway, and we, we're, and we we're want to hear your opinions. <laughs> we definitely want to hear your opinions on what you guys thought was good and bad from the set. Um, it is only a top five, bottom five. So if we didn't get your pick, there was probably something that we had on the cusp of reaching it, but we weren't exactly sure if we should fit it. Exactly. Um, uh, our opinion on the set is like we think some of the chants are good um, a lot of the resonators are just a little underpowered for what we want to see in standard but still playable and also just a quick fact moving forward uh, seeing the power level of this set as a first set from Ray Cluster I think we can expect something either at this power level or maybe it's like slightly higher from the next few sets uh, if so Ray Cluster might be as a whole weaker than Lapis, but really good for the game moving forward, just to keep the power level intact. But, on the other hand, you could be seeing that this is only meant to be used as a draft set and just have some cards that are meant to be good. If you view it like that, we could see some pretty powerful stuff coming out of R2. Uh, famously, the twos of Force of Will clusters are usually the most powerful ones. Here's looking at you, Reflecting Fox. Yep. And Lumia. And Vel2. And... <laughs> yeah. Most of the most powerful rulers come from set two, so be excited for that. Um, we're gonna get also the release on the seals in set two, so that might make some of these other rulers more valuable, particularly making, like, I don't know, if um, Shayla makes a thunderstorm in addition to rain, that could make her really powerful. 
And maybe if um, Kirk gets five billion strength counters, no. <laughs> When he enters the board, give him 5,000 strength counters. Whoa! <laughs> anyway, we're just dragging this on. Yep. So, have a good one, guys. Yep. Hope you guys have fun at your releases and uh, show make us, some nice brews with some she, of these cards. Yep, and show us your polls. we got to see those uh, beautiful, beautiful Ubers. <laughs> I feel bad if you pull an Uber. I'll be honest. Unless it's, one of the star <laughs> Unless it's one of the Star Deck ones. I think people actually have been able to pull Star Deck Ubers. Yeah, those are available. Um, I, I saw somebody pull a Shayla. I still feel welcome. Yeah, Uber Shayla would probably be a good pull. Uber Let's Raya. Oh. Yes, Uber Booty. Uber Booty. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Bye.